Batten down the hatches and check those cleat knots, cause a storm is a brewing. But that dark sky doesn't just foreshadow trouble on the high seas. It actually is a shadow of a chest, which seems like a pretty solid sign from above on the importance of this sketch, interpreting a chest x-ray. But before we read too far into the meaning of this image, first, review the patient's details, the date and time the x-ray was taken, and prior imaging. To analyze a chest x-ray, it's helpful to have a high-quality image. And there are four key factors that contribute to quality. To remember them, have a look at this PEER, which stands for Position, Inspiration, Exposure, and Rotation. Position refers to the position from which the x-ray was taken. Are you looking at a supine AP or PA view or perhaps a lateral view? A PA film, which is taken with a patient in the upright position, has far superior image quality to a supine AP, which is mostly reserved for patients who can't get out of bed. Next, consider if the patient took a deep breath and held it during imaging. With good inspiratory effort, you should see the 8th to 10th posterior ribs. Then, there's exposure. The vertebral bodies behind the heart should just be visible on a well-penetrated chest x-ray. And finally, look for rotation in the image. Rotation makes things difficult to interpret, so check the distance between the medial border of the clavicles and spinous processes. If it's not the same on both sides, order another film. All right, quality image in hand, there's a methodical approach for reading a chest x-ray. Think A, B, C, D, E. Boat A here, with its airway-shaped anchor, is a reminder to assess the airway. And for a better view of what we mean, let's draw our ship into this safe harbor. Start at the top of this rope ladder, or the trachea. The trachea should be positioned at the midline, patent and not deviated to one side, which can be seen with tension pneumothorax, atelectasis, lung and mediastinal masses, uh, among other things. Notice how the rope ladder splits part way down. That's kind of like how the trachea bifurcates at the carina into the right and left main stem bronchi. And keep in mind that foreign bodies are more likely to be lodged in the right main stem bronchus since it's wider, shorter, and more vertical than the left main stem bronchus. Remember also to check the size, density, and position of the hyla or lung roots, which includes the pulmonary vessels, right and left bronchi, and hilar lymph nodes. With the rig in place, take a breather, because B is up next. Boat B's expanding bulge is a reminder to consider breathing. Begin by looking for the pleura, which should not be visible on a chest x-ray unless there's pleural thickening, as symbolized here by this thick sail cover. Speaking of which, these windblown sails are our recurring symbol for lungs. Yeah, you don't really want to miss those. On a chest x-ray, the lungs are divided into three zones, which take up one-third of the height of a lung, similar to how this stitching pattern separates each sail into thirds. Checking the lungs by zones ensures you don't miss any tiny spots. This sailing vessel is certainly under the weather, but it might just hold up after all, though that sea boat looks like it's taken on some serious water. The rain spilling or circulating from it is a reminder to check for circulation, specifically the great vessels, pulmonary vessels, superior vena cava, and aorta. For the aorta, look for the aortic knob, symbolized by this crow's nest, or knob, a characteristic feature on chest x-ray, and also a good place to avoid during a lightning storm. Oh, good thing we brought this ship into port. There's clearly some precious cargo on board. These heart-labeled crates represent the cardiac silhouette. Be sure to check the relative size and position of the heart. Its borders should appear sharp and well-defined. And to ensure this precious cargo fits snugly topside, let's bring out the measuring tape. The cardiothoracic ratio is routinely used to gauge heart size. To calculate this, measure the maximum length of the cardiac silhouette and divide that by the maximal horizontal thoracic diameter. The CTR is usually less than 0.5 on a normal PA film. Expect a high CTR in a patient with cardiomegaly or pericardial effusion. 
and we might not have capsized, but it's still important to survey the damage. Boat D appears to have taken the storm's biggest brunt. And the crossbeams might need a little repair. A reminder to check for bony pathology, like rib and clavicle fractures. But for a bit of good news, the hulls are intact, and stretched between them is catamaran netting, our recurring symbol for the diaphragm. Inspect the dome-shaped hemidiaphragms, which should appear sharp and well-defined. Huh, looks like our first mate Gino's been hard at work trying to mitigate the storm's damage. He's hung these buckets to catch rainwater runoff and to symbolize the approximate location of the costophrenic angles, the angle where the diaphragm and thoracic wall meet. As you probably know, in upright patients, fluid can collect here, resulting in a pleural effusion. And speaking of effusions, letter E also stands for equipment and everything else. Ah, Gino, there you are. Uh, let this serve as a reminder to check for lines, tubes, surgical clips, and sternotomy wires. And when we say everything else, we mean it. Don't forget to look for a pacemaker or ICD and leads, represented here by these wind ropes hanging off the sailboat. Hang on, Gino! Almost done with the sketch. Looking good, buddy. Just a quick look below the board, where... These air bubbles, bubbling out of a gas can, represent the gastric bubble. Located underneath the left hemidiaphragm, the gastric bubble is a normal finding on a chest x-ray. Ooh, that didn't sound good. A warning worth eating. Lots of students confuse the gastric bubble with pneumoperitoneum. That's free air underneath the diaphragm, typically from a perforated viscous. Pneumoperitoneum is an abnormal finding, and the treatment depends on the cause, but we'll save those spicy details for another time. All right, now that you know the ropes, time to recheck the rigging and review this sketch before we set sail. Prior to looking at a chest x-ray or any imaging, review the patient's details, the date and time the image was taken, and previous imaging. Next, check for position, inspiratory effort, exposure, and rotation to confirm image quality. Then use the ABCDE method to interpret a chest x-ray. To begin, check the airway, which includes the trachea, carina, right and left main stem bronchi, and hilar structures. Next, check breathing, specifically the pleura and lungs. Then assess circulation, including the cardiac silhouette and great vessels. After that, check for damage in the bones and the diaphragm. Remember to check the costophrenic angles for a pleural effusion. Check all of your equipment. An endotracheal tube, a central venous catheter, a nasogastric tube, surgical clips, a pacemaker or ICD, and everything else. Ugh. This tempest doesn't seem to be letting up anytime soon, and to be honest, I'm a bit of a landlubber. Time to seek shelter. Hang on, Gino. I'll, um, I'll be right back. Um, do you want a soda?